G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Hey, I bring you sad news. Ginny, rest in peace. Well, I just hear Perseverance Rover saying, good on you, little buddy. And, of course, the little helicopter that could. It's 72nd flight, and it had a contact with the uh, ground. I guess it's got to wait for the uh, aviation authorities to come and recertify it before it can fly again. But that prop's not looking too healthy. So what I thought I would do is I would play this video I made for, you know, what's his face, can't even remember his name anymore. And let's just have a little bit of a chuckle and a laugh, because I know he's going to come out with something equally derpy again now. Enjoy this flashback. Gee, I sound weird in this video. Thanks, guys. G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, this one is for Adam, who is basically being totally dishonest. It's a very simple demonstration using a vacuum chamber and a drone, which highlights the absurdity of NASA supposedly flying a drone in Martian conditions millions of miles away, when our mate here can't even fly his drone in near vacuum conditions from a couple of feet away. Well, I guess because you have a drone and Maybe these guys will be able to fly theirs on Mars better than you can fly yours here on Earth from just a few feet away. We haven't actually seen any footage of your drone flying yet, have we, Adam? So what happened? Did it take off too? Okay, drone in a vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm just going to let it hover there. negative 0.5 atmospheres. I'm having to throttle up more and more and more. Negative 0.8 atmospheres. Look, it's full throttle. It can't even get off the ground now. Now we're going to look at NASA's cunning little demonstration. They did in a vacuum. Now see, Adam, you keep saying in a vacuum. Well, it's not a vacuum. It's near vacuum and it's in Martian surface conditions. And now we come to this NASA charade, touted as an incredible success, the big thumbs up for the, the adventure that was to come, which is now going to be gracing our screens very shortly. But as we've just seen, we can't have flight in a vacuum, even in a small contained area. He did it again, Adam, near vacuum, low pressure. If this thing was so scientific, we'd have had two demos, one proving flight, and then the other replicate, improving flight and replicating the gravity. The reason NASA didn't show the other demo is because they're dishonest. Now, of course, you keep saying, why didn't they do it without the um, harness first? Now, I wouldn't have minded that if they proved footage of it flying in these conditions without it being yanked off the stand. That would have been scientific. You would have proved it. They designed it to work exactly in the Mars conditions, gravity, atmosphere, temperature, everything. And they replicated it and it worked and that is science. So Adam, bye bye. So how is this Martian helicopter going to be flying with incredibly thin air? If they can't replicate it, even in their own successful demo, they had to yank their helicopter off the stand. The excuse was replicating Martian style uh, type gravity. But the reason you're saying it's possible is this successful demo here where you yank your prop off the stand, essentially cheating. It has a tether on the top of the helicopter, which is to replicate Mars is gravity. Okay, I get that. Seems with that very sentence, Adam just shot himself and all his attaboys in the collective foot. There is a tether on top of that helicopter, which is to replicate the Martian gravity. You say you get it, but do you actually get it, Adam? Do you? Do you really? Well, stick around, folks. Let's see if Adam gets it. I guess you're all thinking he's not going to get it. You're probably right. Rather than have this helicopter sat on the ground and then take off, proving flight within a vacuum or near vacuum-like conditions, the helicopter starts on a stand. When is it sitting on the stand, Adam? If you look at the original raw footage, at no point is the drone actually ever sitting on the stand. It is held by the tether at the top to replicate Martian gravity, and I think it's actually got a tether at the bottom to limit its range of movement. 
Well, you muffed that one up, didn't you, old boy? Well, it looks really much like you're not good at drones, Adam. You totally patted Mitchell from Australia on the back for faking a drone hover test. And so we tend to think that your sniff test is demonstrably broken, Adam. Twice. And in yet another demonstration about how little Adam knows about drones. Why couldn't he have just taken off off the ground? The reason that this is not on the floor is that in mid-air it's actually harder to generate lift than on the ground. And that's due to a thing called ground effect. Look it up in Wiki next time before you make a video, Adam. And it would have been great to see the helicopter take off on its own accord rather than get yanked off the stand in the manner in which we're going to see very shortly thus really exposing this for the just nonsense rather than yanked off the stand in this case you're yanking your prop off the stand thus cheating thus giving the game away so let's have a look Get ready for it. It's already fired up. Get ready to yank. Just yanks it, pulls it. Coming under two kilograms. In fact, we weighed in under 1.8 kilograms. We have to be light to fly at Mars. Well, this drone weighs in at under 1.8 kilograms. So what preload does the tether need to have, Adam, for a drone of mass 1,800 grams and a Martian gravity of 3.7 meters per second per second. What is the preload on the tether? Okay, well, I guess I'll have to do it for you. So 1.8 by 3.7 equals 6.66, divide that by 9.8 is 0.67 kilograms. So that's gonna be the weight of this 1.8 kilogram mass on Mars. So the tether has to provide 1.8 minus 0.67, about 1.13 kilograms of uplift in the tether. And that's got to be made constant to simulate Martian gravity. Now the rotors need to only show that they can produce more than 670 grams of lift. And that is demonstrable by the drone moving up about two inches until the bottom tether takes up. I guess they just didn't want this drone going all over the place and possibly falling on the ground and breaking. It's probably worth a million bucks or more. So where is the proof that it was yanked? Now we know that Adam, you just like to look at things and use your sniff test, but we've already just proved demonstrably that your sniff test is broken. I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. So we know there is 1.2 kilograms of tension in the tether to make the Earth gravity seem like Mars gravity. And with the tether on their top, fine, fine, I'm still replicating it. Now, what I did do that Adam didn't do is slow down the moment of liftoff. Take notice of the blades. Did you notice that the reflection of the light on the rotating blades on the right side and the left side changes, changes just a few frames before liftoff? Could that be because the pitch of the blades is changing to maximum thrust? right before liftoff. Yes, it is. Oh, poor Adam. Your debunk fails yet again, doesn't it? I don't entirely know exactly what's going on. So, Wolfie, you had a quick look at these rotors. What do you think about them? Pretty awesome, aren't they? As you can see, it has a unique shape with a deep cord, and then it tapers out to a rounded edge. Now, those are high lift, low drag propellers. They're out of this world, and this drone was able to fly for about an hour. Now the Mars drone has propellers that look very similar to this and it's no surprise really because those would be the most efficient in the thin atmosphere on Mars. Okay Adam, where's your proof? You're yanking your prop. It looks like it was yanked by the string is not proof. That's just your preconceived ideas. My proof Adam is A, you can see the pitch of the rotors change and B, if you look at the audio, you can see there's an increase to audio at exactly the time the drone lifts up. That corresponds to engaging more power or the pitch of the rotors changing. Booyah. You're done, Adam. You blew it again. So if you think I'm crazy, then you carry on. Because not one person on earth can refute people like me. Because I only stand on what is demonstrably true. 
I do not entertain any nonsense. But you are happy to provide nonsense though, aren't you, Adam? So speaking of demonstrable proof, what have you demonstrated here, Adam? You ignore proof and facts given to you even when you yourself have asked for them. Namibia. And when a demonstration is faked right under your nose, you say attaboy, simply because the outcome was flat. You didn't check it at all, did you? You have actually provided demonstrable proof that you cherry pick and that you're operating purely on motivated reasoning. As for your final speech, pot, kettle, black? Twist. Then that just shows you how weak you are and how poor the globe is. It's, I know it can't be easy trying to defend absurdities, but there got to be a point where you ask yourself, if you're genuine and you're online defending this nonsense, why is it? Why am I continuing to defend this nonsense against people who can demonstrate their claims? There's no malice in my heart, despite the fact certain people doing videos about me all the time. Today we're going to have a listen to this lovely lady, and she is lovely to be fair. I think her name's Mimi. First time on any other planet outside of our own Earth. Doing her videos about me all the time. Well, wow, that's creepy, Adam. So not only have you reduced her to a, almost nothing by just saying she's cute, but remember she's one person in the whole planet who has designed and led a team to build an off-world flying machine, and you are just a dime a dozen heavy plant operator, literally hundreds in every city around the world. Adam, you need a total perspective vortex to get a grip on your reality. I cannot believe Wally. It's not exactly brain surgery, is it? <laughs> Which, as a brain surgeon, is what I do. Lionel, here's your drink. Lionel's a brain surgeon, you know. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned it. <laughs> oh, Jeff, they keep you late at the Space Centre. As always. <laughs> and this food round out. Have you met Lionel? Uh, no, hello, Lionel. <laughs> So, Jeff, how do you earn a crust? Uh, oh, I'm a scientist. I, I work mainly with rockets. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's pretty tough work. Um, what do you do? Why, well, I don't mean to boast, but uh, I'm a brain surgeon. Brain surgery? <laughs> Not exactly rocket science, is it? Well, let's have a little bit of fun at the end here, and let's look at the comment section. Oh, no fanfare. Well, he didn't listen, did he? He just assumed the vacuum meant a full vacuum. No, he didn't listen. Scott Hill. Well, because it isn't a vacuum, it's a Martian atmosphere replication. And the Martian atmosphere is a lot thinner than the Earth's atmosphere, but it isn't a vacuum and still able to transmit sound. Oh, Dim Dim is here too, and that's good to see that he's part of this takedown as well. Always fun to take down Dim Dim. Antonio. Have a word with Adam, tell him to man up and open up his comments. I mean, the only thing you ever did right was not hide in Coward's Castle like the rest of these clowns do. Well, Adam likes to mock me and say that I've got my feet pointing in the opposite direction to him. And I suppose you'll be thinking that all our drones are flying upside down. Well, Adam, I'm happy to say that all our drones fly exactly the right way. See, there's nothing that you're going to be able to say or do about this, because this is demonstrable proof. That all our drones fly exactly as they are meant to fly. Sorry Adam, you're busted yet again mate. Oh, that's enough. <laughs> Oh. <sighs>